Hey guys, welcome to my channel. If you find this video helpful, please like, comment and share. And don't forget to subscribe. Thank you. Today we are going to discuss about blood coagulation. And more precisely in this section, uh, we are going to discuss about how blood kept into liquid form in a healthy cardiovascular system. Okay. As we know, normally in our healthy cardiovascular system, blood is circulating in liquid form. But the interesting property of our cardiovascular system is whenever there is any damage of any part of severe system, it has the capability to repair it as soon as possible. Suppose here is a breach in continuity of the vessel wall. Within a second, a semi-solid mass will be formed from the constituent of blood and will stick over there so that the blood will remain in liquid form and keep on circulating in the severe system. So we need to know two important things. First, how blood kept into liquid form in healthy cardiovascular system and second is how plug is formed from the blood constituent. The very first thing is simple dilution. Blood flowing past the site of injury and washes out the activated coagulation factors which are rapidly removed by the liver. Platelets love to bind with the extracellular matrix or underlying collagen. So it is necessary to maintain a healthy endothelial cell layer to prevent the unwanted platelet plug. Here I would like to mention one important concept regarding endothelial cells. Let's draw two endothelial cells. This one is healthy and this one is injured endothelial cells. You should always remember that the healthy endothelial cells has anticoagulant property. But as soon as it gets injured, it becomes procoagulant. So healthy endothelial cell is necessary to keep the blood in liquid form. Healthy endothelial cells are biologically active. They secrete many products in general circulation. Among them, we are going to discuss about some products which has anticoagulant property. Healthy endothelial cells produce nitric oxide and PGI2 which is also called postacycline and adenosine diphosphatase. They are antiplatelet agents. They don't allow the platelet to stick with each other and also with endothelium. What they do actually, they inhibit some receptors on platelet surface. For platelet to stick to the endothelial surface, their surface receptor should be in active state. These substances bind with the platelet and inactivate those receptors so that platelet is unable to bind with the endothelium. And adenosine diphosphatase which actually degrades the ADP which is necessary for the platelet aggregation. Now let's discuss about some anticoagulants which naturally present in blood. Healthy endothelial doesn't allow any activated coagulation factors to accumulate near to it and prevent unnecessary coagulation. Now let's see how they do this special function. As you know, heparin is naturally occurring anticoagulant produced by basophils and muscles. Healthy endothelial cells express heparin on its surface. Now another protein molecule which comes from the liver and binds with the heparin molecule is antithrombin 3. As soon as antithrombin 3 binds with the heparin molecule, it gets activated and starts neutralizing some important activated coagulation factors. It behaves like a biological cutter molecule and can efficiently destroy thrombin and activated factor 9, factor 10, 11 and factor 12. Now another molecule expressed by endothelium which is a modulator molecule. As you know, normally thrombin acts as a coagulant protein, but if it binds with this molecule, what they do actually, they modulate the function of thrombin molecule. That's why this molecule is named as thrombomodulin. Now as soon as thrombin is modulated, it will activate protein C. 
Here, this is thrombomodulin, above it, it is thrombin, and finally, protein C. Then, activated protein C will digest away or deactivate activated factor 5 and factor 8. Healthy endothelial cells also have the power to destroy fibrin molecule. It produces a substance called tissue plasminogen activator which can convert plasminogen to plasmin and plasmin has the ability to cut or degrade the fibrin molecule into fibrin degradation products. Another interesting point is plasminogen is also activated by factor 12 dependent pathway. That's why factor 12 deficiency causes thrombosis. It's a rare genetic disorder due to mutation of the F12 gene on chromosome number 5. Another point I would like to mention, once activated, plasmin in turn tightly controlled by counter-regulatory factors such as alpha-2 antiplasmin, a plasma protein that binds and rapidly inhibit free plasmin. So these are the mechanisms continuously running in our circulatory system to keep the blood in liquid form and to prevent the unnecessary coagulation. That's all guys, I am also creating hand-drawn medical mnemonics, illustrations and many more and continuously uploading on my Patreon page. I will be highly obliged if you guys place some amount for the improvement of the video. If not, then at least you can be my Patreon and encourage me. Thank you very much.